Hello everyone, this is Helios Raven, I tell you how I do it, even if you don't care. And we're on week two of our in-depth look of the forces of chaos. Seems like the powers of chaos were too strong to contain in one week, and so we had to split up in the two. And now we're going to look into the second book, which, which is the Armageddon Handbook. Now, one quick note here, I did mention when I did my in-depth look of the Imperial Navy, a book called The Vessels of the Imperium. That was my mistake. What it was is that there are only two books that Games Workshop ever created which was the Battlefleet Gothic rulebook and the, Arma and the Armada book. The Armada book is what listed the forces of the, the, vessels of the, the vessels of the Imperium. And what happened was is when they decided to post all the books online for free, they broke them up into individual sections. And so I was just reading the top of the um, page in that section, and it said Vessels of the Imperium. So all those, ves all those ships in the Vessels of the Imperium section are in the... Armada Handbook, and all the ships we're going to talk about today are in the Armada Handbook as well. And the first one on our list is the Planet Killer. This is probably the most famous of all the ships in the Forces of Chaos. The Planet Killer can only be used in battles that consist of a thousand points or more, and if it's taken, it has to be your flagship, with good reason. The battleship has 14 hit points, which is the strongest ship we've seen next to the Blackstone Fortress. It's got 20 speed. 45 degree turns, 4 shields, 5 plus armor, and 5 turrets. So it's got your standard battleship stats, but it's got a lot more turrets, making it a lot harder to hit with bombers and torpedoes than normal um, vessels are. It also can't do the come to a new heading special order because it is so big and bulky. It has a lot of firepower to boot, that's for sure. It's got one PAL weapon battery, which um, has a range of 60 centimeters, can front in its left front or right arc, and is power 12. It has port weapon batteries and starboard weapon batteries at 60 centimeters as well, power 6. So you can either fire on one side with a strength 18 weapon battery shot, or split it up and do 12 and 12, which is really, really good. Especially if you get that thing in close quarters combat with the weapon gunnery chart, you can get up to about 11 dice to roll on either side of this vessel, or 17 if you decide to focus fire on one end. It also has one dorsal, lan dorsal lance at 60 centimeters of power 6 front left right arc, which is also really, really good. And then it, because that's six dice that roll that need four ups to wound. Also has n a torpedo pa bay, which is nine pa strength, so nine torpedoes that can fire in its left front or right arc, which is also phenomenal. And it has got the Armageddon gun. Yes, this is the weapon that you use the ar the rules for the super mega death shot on the Blackstone Fortress. Want to give a shout out to JKILCO and um, the Clash 24 for mentioning that on the video post. And so this is and so this is a pretty powerful gun. It's got a 90 centimeter range. It fires only in its front arc, and it follows the following special rules: the Armageddon gun can only be fired if the ship hasn't isn't been hasn't been crippled has burned retro or gone all ahead full or brace for impact special order and it can only be fired directly in front of it what you do is you take the the um, nova cannon template and place it at the base of the ship's stem the stem of the ship's base and then you draw a line 90 centimeters out and bring the template across that line any ship that gets touched by the template suffers an automatic hit any ship that Gets hit, has the center of the template pass over them, suffers D6 automatic hits, if any other part of it, and let's see, and then basically, the hits take down shields exactly as normal, and ordnance touched by the template is destroyed. Once the Armageddon has fired, it must rebuild a charge. Basically, you need to roll a reload ordnance to fire it again. If you unfortunately roll double sixes for the reload, then the Armageddon gun basically malfunctions, you inflict an automatic critical hit on the planet killer itself, and you render the Armageddon gun useless. Uh, now, in accordance with, um, if you say on any other double roll, the Armageddon gun has one more shot in it before it has to shut down completely before it causes any more damage. Now, say if you decide to fire its torpedoes in the same round that you fired the Armageddon gun, what happens then is, is you roll one reload ordnance roll 
for both. It counts for both of them. So if you roll a double six, you lose your torpedoes and you lose the Armageddon gun and suffer ki critical hit damage. So it's got its great, it's got its goods and its bads in terms of the Blackstone Fortress's uses. I would assume that it suffer it. It follows the warp cannon rules and doesn't do the reload ordnance capability, but that's all for interpretation. And we're not here about that. We're here about the Planet Killer ship, which is an awesome, awesome vehicle. I think it's a really huge powerhouse, and with good reason. And if I were ever fighting a Chaos Force in a thousand-point battle or so, I'd be questioning why the Planet Killer isn't there. Granted, if it's a thousand points even, I'd probably understand not having the Planet Killer because that is half your force right there and would limit how many vehicles you could have after that, especially since you're going to need a War Master and all this other good stuff. And other than that, it is a powerhouse by far. It is a wonderful ship. If I actually played the Forces of Chaos, I would definitely pick one up just so I had one in case I ever decided to use the um, Planet Killer in a f fairly large battle. And all in all, it's got its, it's definitely well worth its point value in the larger games, and it is a major beast. Downside to that is, it's going to draw a lot of your attacks. It's going to draw most of the enemy fire because of the Armageddon gun, and its sheer amounts of firepower, so... Though it can hold its own, it can't last forever. So if you have the Planet Killer in your force, expect that to be the ship that gets the most hits thrown at it. Just because players are going to want to get rid of that ship as fast as possible. Because of just the sheer massive firepower this thing can hold out. Out of all of the additional ships that were brought into in the Armada book, I think this one was the most powerful of them all. And that is basically it for the Planet Killer. When we'll tune in next time when we continue our in-depth look into the forces of chaos. And until then, this is Helios Raven, signing off.